the last elasticity to look at now, and this is price elasticity of supply. And house building always makes me think of price elasticity of supply because um, you have to plan so far in advance for house building as well. So we're gonna we're gonna see later on that house building would be one of those things that's quite unresponsive to changes in prices because um, the suppliers, the house building companies can't act very quickly. So for this section you need to be able to calculate price elasticity of supply, you need to understand and explain the factors that influence it and interpret the values of it. So price elasticity of supply is measuring the responsiveness of quantity supplied so that's the only thing that's changed here from the other elasticities to a change in the price of the product so when the price of the product changes how responsive is the quantity supplied and we can get two figures we can get a figure that's elastic where the percentage change in the quantity supplied is sensitive to a change in price and we can get price inelastic where the change in the quantity supplied is insensitive to a change in price so the equation is percentage change in quantity supplied over percentage change in price, price always being on the bottom or anything to do with money being on the bottom. So let's have a, a look at um, a question again. I've got um, a question about egg sandwiches. What is price? So if the price changes from £1.50 to £1, it's 50p change. It's a decrease in price over £1.50. So it is. Uh, it should really be, it should have a minus sign there, 0 0.33 or 33.3 reoccurring percent. And the quantity supplied has changed from 250 to 200. Very logical here because the suppliers are thinking they can make less from it now there's a lower amount of profit that can be made um so it is um minus 50 over 250 uh being minus not point two there should be a point there or 20 percent minus 20 percent so when we put that together we've got minus 20 percent over minus 0.3 reoccurring and we get um 0 0.6 so because they're minus divided by minus that gets rid of that minus sign and we can see there it's 0 0.6 so we know it's inelastic because it's beginning with a zero um just a little note for you because supplies upward sloping it should always come out as a positive number but occasionally it does come out as a negative number just when um, supply has been particularly slow to respond but normally it should be it should be um, always a positive number so PES is above one it's elastic so if it's starting with one point something two point something three point something so on it's elastic if it's uh, one it's unitary or unit elastic if it's below one it's inelastic so if it starts with zero point something and as I said it should always be a positive number so let's have a look at a few questions here so if a product increases in price by 30% and the quantity supplied increases by 40% what is the PES what does this mean well we already know that the quantity supplied there is increasing by a larger percentage than the price so we can already guess that that's going to be elastic but if we put that there it comes out as 1.3 reoccurring so elastic second question if a product decreases in price by 20% and the quantity supplied decreases by 10% what is the PES we can see there that the percentage change in price is larger than percentage change in quantity supplied so we can already guess that that's going to be an inelastic product but if we put it into the equation we get minus 10 divided by minus 20 0.5 meaning it's inelastic so very um so it's uh insensitive to a change in price and then we've got one where we actually need to work out the percentages here they've not just given them to you so the price of pizza increases from two pounds to over three pounds so we know that that percentage change is going to be one over two and as a result the quantity supplied increases from one thousand units a week to two thousand units a week so um we've got um one thousand over um 1000 so that's 100% increase there what is the PS what does this mean so we've got um, 0.5 as I said before the change in the price uh, uh, and 1000 over 1000 is one 100% change so when we put that into our equation which is percentage change in quantity supplied of the percentage change price we've got one over 0 0.5 which gives us two which means that it is elastic um, so that's probably what your four mark question would be usually they give you one of the um, percentage changes so they won't make you work it all out so this is what inelastic supply looks like quite sleep um quite sleep quite um, steep sloping upwards though and perfectly inelastic supply would just be a vertical line this is elastic supply sloping upwards again perfectly elastic supply would be a horizontal line and this is unitary it goes through the um, point of origin um, 
and it's got a 45 degree angle to it. So influences on PES, um, three main things, the availability of the stocks of the products, the availability of factors of production and time. So the first factor, availability of stocks of the products, so it's quite elastic, we can increase supply quite easily or decrease supply or well really we're thinking about with stocks increasing supply so if the price goes up we can increase it quite easily if there's lots of stocks or you it's a, the type of product that you can actually store so goods tend to be things that you can store whereas it's going to be quite inelastic if there's a lack of stock or you're unable to store the product so services are much more difficult to store the availability of the factors of production the second factor, so if um, price goes up, can you increase your supply easily? Well, you can if you've got a lot of spare capacity or the avail the factors of production are readily available. So we're thinking about land and the, the raw materials. But it's going to be quite difficult if you've got a low availability of the factors of production or you're already working at full capacity because it's going to be very hard to increase your supply. And then the time zone, this is just the same for when we were looking at PED. In the long run, it's easier for suppliers to be able to change production quantities, whereas in the short run, it's more difficult for them, especially the more complicated the production process is. So if we're thinking back to house building, in the long run, house builders can really um, respond to changes in price. Whereas in the short run, it's going to be difficult for them to respond uh, because houses, you know, there's a big lead time on houses. Um, I imagine with the planning process and then the building process, it's more like kind of two year um, process there. So why is it important for business? Well, in general, firms will try and make their supply as elastic as possible because they're hoping that they're going to be able to profit or cash in from rises in prices. And if the price falls, they really want to be able to to put their resources, their factors of production into something else that's going to be a lot more profitable for them. So they want to be very, very responsive um, to changes in price. So those are all the specification objectives.